Hey guys, how's it going? Z Butler TCG here. Uh, I've had a lot of requests for an updated Salomon Great deck profile for the September 2020 format, even though we're only a day into it. And uh, yeah, I thought I'd show you guys what I'm thinking is going to be pretty good, at least for the beginning. Um, I'm primarily working off of like Duelist Academy tournament results because their box trim over the past weekend used the uh, current forbidden and limited list and then a little bit of testing and uh, a local that I played in um, So I'll show you guys the deck. I'll break it down like I usually do is starters extenders, etc, etc and kind of go over what I'm thinking the correct lines are for this deck uh, currently um, So with the Change to the Forbidden Limited list, we no longer have to worry about Adam Emancipator, which means you don't necessarily have to play the same power of hand traps you played before. However, Dragon Link and Infernoble still exist, so you do have to play some forms of hand traps. Uh, those are probably going to be two of the best decks along with Dinosaur, which is a very difficult matchup. Um, Eldritch Synchro is pretty, pretty much gone, but the Dogmatica deck still exists too. Um, so you're kind of just positioned in a way that the format's already pretty defined and you just need to figure out the best method of beating the current best decks. Um, and then there's all, also like Numeron Eldritch and stuff, which uh, this deck I think actually has a fairly decent matchup against. So I'll just kind of go over the deck. So first we have our starters, uh, three Lady Debug, of course, uh, just one Flame Bufferlow, two Salon Great Foxy, one Gazelle, one Circle, and three Synet Mining. So this gives you uh, 11 starters, uh, which gives you an 82% chance to open up with one going first, which is pretty pretty ideal. The uh, odds of between opening uh, up with 11 versus 12 just weren't really that different, so I figured I would just play one less Buffalo since it's a little bit weaker and uh, those random draws just aren't necessarily as strong, especially when you go first right now. You don't have to draw as many non-engine cards, and so Buffalo get, uh, lost a little bit of power with that. However, if the Dragon Link deck does consistently end on spheres, Buffalo will become more powerful because of that, because then you'll at least, if they bounce your starter card, be able to um, get your draws off of that. Uh, one thing I had considered was actually dropping Foxy to one and playing two Buffalo again. Uh, however, I felt like Foxy might be a little bit better because Foxy is actually a uh, uh, a cold out to uh, the Buster Lock, whereas none of the other ones are. As long as you draw like Foxy and you know any uh, Salmon Great Extender, you can out the Buster Lock, which is pretty good. So that's why I feel like Foxy gains a little bit more validity than before, and otherwise, and I think the starters are pretty. Pretty self-explanatory from there. Uh, for extenders, you've got two Jack Jaguar, uh, two Spinny, one Falco, three Parallel Exceed, and three Pot of Desires. So the Salmon Great extenders are still probably the worst ones of the deck comparative to these six. Uh, Pot of Desires is always good. I'm always gonna advocate for three of those in a deck like this, and uh, Parallel Exceed is pretty insane. Uh, I, re I started to re-include Falco again, uh, with Adam Emancipator being gone, the format slowed down significantly, and not everyone is going to be doing the same level of crazy combo plays because we don't have Jet Synchron and O Lion, meaning that you, in order to do the Herald Savage plays, you have to give it more resources, which means that it'll be easier to grind out the game. And so Falco gains a little bit of extra utility that way, and also. You need just an additional level 4 extender since the games will go longer. So those are the extenders. Uh, for the removal cards, there's actually way more removal cards than normal. So I'm actually meaning three Cosmic Cyclones and then one of each of the traps. So I don't need to discuss the traps, they're searchable, which is why there's only one and one. However, I wanted to discuss Cosmic Cyclone. So Cosmic Cyclone gives you another method to out the Buster Lock, which is problematic right now. Uh, I feel like going forward, any d combo deck is going to try to buster lock you as much as they can, and so you need to have outs to that. Uh, also, I feel that the Aquero and Conquistador 
uh, are relatively powerful in the Eldritch deck in this matchup in that uh, being able to disrupt you from either being able to recur or start your plays is pretty powerful. So having a main deck out to those is really good. And then, of course, you know, a Cosmic Cyclone going first can out cards like uh, Cursed Eldland um, and various uh, other engine cards, too, in various other decks, such as Infernoble. You can Cosmic Cyclone there, um, Durandal, and things like that. So Cosmic Cyclone definitely gained a lot of power going into the uh, September format. From there, uh, there's just two bombs, uh, Monster Reborn and Will of the Salmigrate. These could also be classified as extenders. They don't really serve the purpose of typical bombs. However, in this deck with how weak all your cards are, they kind of become bombs, which is a little sad. Uh, just one and one. In the previous format towards the end, I had actually advocated for three Will and one Monster Reborn because of the Ad Emancipator deck. But with Ad Emancipator no longer existing in the same realm, um, Will loses a lot of the, the a lot of the power that it, it had before, where you needed to be able to to resolve your first play. Um, so I just cut it down to one and one, and I felt like that was pretty appropriate. And then defensive cards, uh, three Ash Blossom, of course, because this is Salomon Great, so this is the only deck that can play it effectively. Three Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, and three Infinite Impermanence. Uh, Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, I feel like, gains even more uh, power now that uh, we don't have O-Lion and Jet Synchron because you don't have as many recurrable or you don't have as many abusable resources with your Halifibrax and your Auroradon and things like that. And so Ghost Ogre gains a bit of power that way. Also against the Numeron deck, uh, Dragons, things like that. Uh, one very key thing to do is to Ogre, um, if they go like uh, Romulus, uh, Pisty LP, you can Ogre, and then it shuts off both the Pisty and the LP, which is pretty strong. It doesn't come up too often, but it's there. Uh, and then Ash Blossom is just a generic, all-around, pretty average hand trap. Uh, from there, you've got one Engine Requirement and Sanctuary, of course, and uh, one Filler and Upstart Goblin, just because I want this deck to be even more consistent. For the extra deck, uh, Abyss Dweller, it's a rank 4 deck. Uh, I'm still playing Baguska. I had actually considered playing um, Rafflesia and then a single copy of Floodgate Trap Hole and a single copy of Gravedigger Trap Hole. Uh, not just for Nibiru, for the Gravedigger, but Floodgate Trap Hole actually is surprisingly useful right now. So that was something I'd considered. Um, a lot of the times people will put their regular monsters like in Dragon Link when they have a uh, a monster above with an arrow pointing down, they'll put the monster that they're going to summon, uh, the regular monster, in the zone that they would put the extra deck monster in. So if you for if you floodgate right there, then they actually just like lose that zone, which is really important. But Baguska is always solid as well. Uh, then you've got, you know, your typical three Bay Links, three Sunlight Wolves, uh, two Heat Leos. That's pretty standard. I would actually consider cutting Heat Leo to one right now. Uh, but I don't have anything else I needed to play in front of it, so I don't know. I just didn't feel like Heat Leo has been all that useful right now. But uh, the Eldritch strategy has slowed down enough to where spinning cards back might actually be pretty good. And then you've got Lingaribo, of course, uh, Splash Mage, Update Jammer, Transcode Talker, and Access Code Talker. Uh, and I'll show you guys the concept side deck right now. It's pretty... I don't really have words for it. It's kind of just there. I don't know. Uh, so first you've got three Gammas and Driver. Uh, these only go in going second against like combo decks and stuff because you just need to survive. So that's what those are for. Uh, to go with those actually I side in three Droll and Lockbird. Uh, this is because I've watched regular Dragon Link play quite a bit lately and I've noticed how much it searches. And because of that I feel like Droll and Lockbird might actually be pretty decent against that deck. Um, if they begin with like a safer or a chaos space and you can draw a Lockbird, you can essentially force them to end their turn without really doing the same level of combo. So draw a Lockbird gets a lot of uh, utility in that matchup, which is why it's being considered right now. I'm also citing double Dogaren, uh, specifically Dogaren because it's recurrable via Sunlight Wolf and most of the time you can just out it with like your access code and stuff because you're just going to get over there and negate and then yeah, it'll just go off. 
Uh, these could easily be Gamma Seals or something, or Gadarla if the Wind Barrier Statue of Play comes up again, but I feel like that's pretty terrible, so we re like people recognize not to do that. Uh, Pankratops, just because it's insane going second. Uh, Harpy's Feather Duster, just for control matchups, and then uh, I'm citing the Sanctum Package. Um, this is primarily just for Dragon Link when they go second, so I can just flip this and just turn off the turn. This also just makes them citing into Lightning Storm and Harpy's Feather Duster a little bit worse, so it's it's been alright. You can also cite a single Lancia off of this as well. Um, I could definitely see dropping one of the Dogarens for a Lancia and then dropping the one for like Red Reboot or something. Um, these have been pretty good. But uh, yeah, that's my updated Salomon Great deck because I know a lot of people have wanted to get my thoughts on how I feel the deck should be played. And so here we are. Uh, I'm going to be playing this deck probably for the remainder of my remote duels for the week. Uh, and just to kind of see how it goes. So uh, if you guys have any questions or anything, let me know down below. And uh, please like, comment, and subscribe.